Hello, everybody. Um, today's topic, we are going to be talking about um, program design for cardiovascular endurance. Um, so I'm going to start by showing you a brief PowerPoint and then kind of going over um, what we're going to do for an assignment for this. So again, um, our goals with this unit are to kind of discuss how we would um, set up a program for somebody who's interested in improving their cardiovascular fitness, and then also um, understanding how we monitor exercise intensity and then the application associated with that. Um, so the assignment that will kind of go along with this unit is related to our ability to be able to like um, accurately <clears throat> judge how hard somebody is working, which can be really challenging, um, as you'll kind of find out once we get going on this assignment. So let's take a look. Maybe. There we go. So again, you've seen this a hundred times. What are the ACSM recommendations associated with aerobic exercise? Um, again, we want people to do uh, moderate intensity exercise five days a week, 30 minutes per day, or vigorous three to three three days per week, 20 minutes per session. Um, again, you can use some sort of combination of those things. Um, the other important thing to note when we think about these guidelines is understanding where the client is currently at. So if you have somebody who is doing absolutely nothing and they're um, you know, not fit at all, it's probably not realistic for you to right off the bat say, hey, we're gonna do five um, days of 30 minutes of aerobic exercise. They're gonna be like, no, I'm not gonna do that and walk out and you'll never see them again. Um, so again, we've gotta be realistic with this. Um, these can be goals that we work towards. That doesn't mean you know, day one that we're gonna throw this at them and expect them um, to be able to hit these guidelines. So again, these are, these are end goals for us um, that we wanna progress our clients to. So lots of ways for us to kind of monitor what this means. So again, we say, you know, 30 minutes moderate intensity exercise, but what actually is moderate intensity, right? Um, so there's a lot of ways that we can measure this. Let's see if I can get my little pointer here. Okay. Um, so I think primarily what we will use in this class and probably what you would use in the real world is this percentage of heart rate max. Okay. Um, so again, these are all in the textbook that are related to, um, you know, each intensity and how we would calculate these. So you'll have a couple, um, um, you're going to, you're going to calculate these heart rate zones for um, your clients and somebody in your family who will hopefully can be a guinea pig for you um, in order to complete this assignment. Certainly using percentage of VO2 max is gonna be more accurate than this. Um, however, in order for us to calculate percentage of VO2 max, we would need to know what your VO2 max was. So you'd have to do that test like what we did in exercise physiology um, in the fall where you actually come in and you run on a treadmill and we hook up the um, metabolic cart to your face and, and measure oxygen consumption. So while this is, is certainly more accurate, also not feasible for the average person. Again, if you're working as a personal trainer in a gym or something along those lines, you're probably not gonna have access to um, doing a VO2 max test. That's something that's um, generally more found in, in a lab setting. Um, and then I also gave you two different RPE scales. Um, I prefer to use this one through 10 scale. Um, so again, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the hardest you could go, one being, you know, nothing basically. How hard do you feel like you're working? Okay, um, so again, this is a fairly good estimate for us. Um, the more fit your person is, the more accurate RPE is in, in terms of determining you know, how hard they're actually working. Um, the original RPE scale was based on a six to 20 point. So six was the lowest that you could work, 20 was the highest that you could work. And again, the reason it was set up that way is because it's an easy calculation for you then to kind of determine what heart rate would go with, with that. So again, on a scale of, of 6 to 20, 20 being as hard as I could possibly work, 6 being the lightest that I could possibly work, 
Again, if you feel like you're at a six, which is the lowest intensity, you just multiply six by 10, that gives you 60. So your heart rate's around 60 beats per minute. Again, if I'm working as hard as I possibly can and I'm at a 20, um, 20 times 10, that gives us 200. So our max heart rate is around 200. Um, so again, it's a, it's a decent estimate for us if we wanna kind of relate um, perception of work with heart rate. Um, so, so that's one option. But again, I think for the client, it's a little bit more challenging for um, them to, to analyze that scale versus if it's just a one to 10 scale, that's a little bit easier. Um, so for our assignment, we're going to use a RPE one to 10. And we're also going to use percentage of heart rate max. And we're going to calculate this for each of our clients. So how do I know what somebody's maximum heart rate is? Um, probably the easiest way to do this is just simply take 220 minus their age, okay? Um, so that's a fairly good estimate. It's appropriate for both men and women. Um, you know, again, maybe it's not the, the best of all of our options for heart rate max. However, it's the most simplistic. Um, and so, you know, it's super easy for us to use. Um, and that's probably the most commonly used way. Okay, so that's heart rate um, is equivalent to 220 minus whatever that individual's age is. Okay. Um, this second method um, is a little bit more complex. It's, it's good for this particular age range, so younger individuals, so it's good for kids and also, you know, up to 34 years old. Um, here's another method for us, 208 times or minus 0.7 times age, again, good for healthy adults, um, not good for, you know, your diseased population or um, extremely deconditioned people. Okay. Um, again, men and women who participate in fitness programs, I don't really know what that means, but again, that was their subject population when they figured out this calculation. And then um, lastly, down here at the bottom, um, asymptomatic, middle-aged women referred for stress testing. So um, really an interesting population here. Um, again, I don't need you to memorize each of these or anything else. I just want you to appreciate that there are multiple ways that we can calculate their heart rate max. Um, if I were you, I'd just stick, stick with this easiest version, the 220 minus your age um, for all of your clients. I think that'll be fine for purposes in our tests. Um, again, another great way for us to actually figure out what somebody's heart rate max is if they're a healthy individual and they're actually um, very concerned with improving cardiovascular fitness measure their heart rate max have them do a fitness test where they're supposed to be going maximally <clears throat> and then see what their heart rate max is um, so for my triathlon tr training i uh um, you know, work with a variety of people, but they're all concerned with or interested in improving their cardiovascular fitness. Um, I've got a guy who is, I would say he's 40, I think he's 43. Um, and again, I'll, I'll test them in all three modes of exercise. So they, they'll do a swim fitness test. They do bike fitness tests. They do a run fitness test. And I retest them for each mode, I don't know, it depends, but maybe every like couple months they'll do one of these tests again. And like when he does his run tests, again, like 43 year old guy, he does his run test, he can get his max heart rate up to like 196 or something like that. So significantly higher than what we would get out of this test, okay? Um, I've got another gal who is, mm, she's, probably a couple years younger than me. She, she's probably about 30. Um, but when she does her fitness test for running, we can't get her above 182 or something along those lines. Um, so there's certainly some variability when looking at this. For your average person, it's a good place to start. If you're working with somebody who's very concerned with improving their cardiovascular fitness and they're very serious about it, and they're healthy, do a fitness test with them and find out what the actual max is so that you can be more accurate with your heart rate zones that you're going to prescribe them. Okay. 
Um, again, we've been over this when we think about duration of exercise. Again, we want to try and get 150 minutes moderate or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity exercise per week. Um, we want each bout to be at least 10 minutes in duration, and it can be, you know, any type of continuous rhythmic exercise involving uh, large muscle groups. So, you know, swimming, biking, running, elliptical, rowing, um, walking, hiking, you know, any of those things, uh, dance, zoom, zoom, is it Zumba? Zumba. Um, so any of those types of things can certainly get your heart rate up and um, kind of fall within that rhythmic exercise zone um, in order for them to improve their cardiovascular fitness. Um, if you have someone who's interested in weight loss and in reality, you know, when we're working with general population, um, people in, in kind of a personal training realm, most of them are coming to you for weight loss, right? So um, again, meet them where they want, where they are to start with, you know, be judgment free when we're, when we're kind of working with them. And then we wanna try and work our way up gradually up to like 60 minutes per day would be great. Um, the main thing with these individuals is consistency. Right? So again, we want to consistently be doing exercise every day or nearly every day in order for them to be able to progress. So again, um, remember that 10% progression rule. Um, and I think I have that listed on one of the slides coming up. But if I can do 20 minutes now, I want to progress no faster than 10% more than that each week. Okay, So if I can do 20 minutes now, I can add two extra minutes for next week. Okay, so that would put me at 22 minutes. Okay, and then the following week, um, I can increase those workouts from 22 minutes to 24 and a half minutes or whatever, right? Um, so again, the idea is you can progress that volume per workout 10% each week. Um, again, we talked about modes of exercise. What might this involve? Um, this is kind of weird, but this is included in your textbook, so I thought I would include it here. <clears throat> um, so different exercise groups are listed over here, and this describes what type of um, movements they involve. So exercise group A, recommended for any adults. Um, these are endurance exercises that require minimal skill um, or fitness to perform. So for example, um, walking leisure cycling, aqua aerobics, dancing. Um, those things, uh, I don't, would say dancing requires some skills, um, but you know, you don't, you don't have to do well at, at that in order to get your heart rate up, if that makes sense. Um, that's always a big question that I get when working with individuals like in swimming. Um, you know, and, and for like our runners, for example, it's a great way for them to cross train. And they'll be so concerned with how fast they're able to swim. I'm like, well, it doesn't really matter. Like your technique doesn't matter. If your goal is to just get your heart rate up, I don't really care what your technique looks like um, as long as you're trying hard, right? Um, so unless they're concerned with like racing as, as, you know, a swimmer or a triathlete or something, then it doesn't really matter, you know, if they look good doing it or if they're doing it efficiently or not, we just want to get your heart rate up. Um, so again, these are examples of, of activities that require minimal skill, basically. Um, group B, vigorous intensity exercises requiring minimal skill. So again, these individuals um, are habitually physically active or at least of an average physical fitness. So jogging, running, rowing, spinning, um, elliptical, stair stepper, those are all examples of exercises that don't really require skill, um, but you know, we need to be at least of an average physical fitness in order to be able to do those without the risk of injury or without a high risk of injury um, or burnout. Uh, group C, endurance activity requiring skill. Um, so swimming, cross country skiing, skating. Again, um, not only do we need to have a skill, but we also have to have good fitness in order to be able to complete that skill. Um, so you need really two of those components in order to um, be able to successfully get something out of, of these types of, of um, movements. And then lastly is D, recreational sport. So again, any adults um, with regular exercise um, participation and at least kind of the average fitness. So again, could be racket sports, could be 
basketball, could be downhill skiing, hiking, um, soccer. Um, again, I, I think, you know, hiking we could probably put up here depending on what type of terrain we're going on. Um, certainly in Iowa, you know, um, if we're hiking or, you know, in the Midwest, I know some of you guys are from Illinois too, um, you know, hiking in the Midwest, if the terrain's not challenging, then I think that that could probably come up here to group A. Um, if we're going, you know, hiking a 14er in Colorado, well, okay, you're going to need a good amount of fitness in order to be able to do that. So um, I think it certainly depends on what terrain you're, you're looking at when we're doing hiking. Again, what's the purpose of, of kind of grouping these exercises? Um, it's just to kind of help us to understand where each of your clients are at and what's appropriate for them. So again, if you're working with somebody who doesn't have any skill and doesn't have much for fitness, let's try to start them here and then move them down to kind of this next category where they have some physical fitness, but they don't necessarily have skill. Um, again, I, I talked about this rule, 10% rule. So again, we want to um, only progress our clients at a, at a rate of 10% um, or less than that per week, okay? So they can only um, increase their volume or intensity by 10% um, each week, okay? Um, certainly the, the rate of progression is going to depend on their health status, physical fitness, training responses, and their exercise program goals. Um, so, so those are things to certainly think about. Um, but again, we want to stay at 10% or less um, when progressing our, our clients. Um, think about those the fit components. So could we increase the frequency, the intensity, um, you know, the time or the duration as well um, when, when we're thinking about how we're going to progress them. Okay. Um, so inactive individuals, again, we want to initiate exercise at a light to moderate intensity and then gradually increase um, for those for those individuals. So again, it's all about meeting that person where they're currently at and then being able to, you know, appropriately progress them so that A, they don't get injured, B, they stick with it, right? Um, and, you know, C, they don't get burned out or feel overwhelmed or anything like that. So um, th those are some of the reasons why this rate of progression is pretty important. Okay, so next, I want to kind of show you um, what we're going to do with this information. So let's see here. Let's see if I can get the right assignment pulled up. Okay. So this is really like a two part thing. Okay, um, so I'm gonna explain both of them kind of separately, but they're all gonna be due together. So you're gonna, you have lots of time to get this done. I've given you two weeks to get this done. Um, so you are going to coerce one of your family members, could be a brother, sister, um, mom, dad, whoever lives with you, whoever is safe um, around you um, to be your guinea pig for um, this assignment. Okay, so um, you'll start, put your client's name, mom, okay, what's her age? She's 53, whatever. Um, so we're going to calculate her heart rate max um, and then put your name here. I guess I probably don't need your name because you'll be the one submitting it, but anyway. Um, so let's, I'm going to go through this um, as an example so you know what you're going to do. So let's put mom and let's say she's 53 years old. Okay, and I'm going to use the um, predicted heart rate max. I'm just going to use 220 minus her age. So I have to use my phone because maybe I have to use my phone. Breck rearranged um, everything on my phone. So, oh, there I found the calculator. <laughs> so 220 minus 53. So her heart rate max is 167. and trainer name, Dr. B. So then I'm gonna calculate um, her heart rate and RPE zones um, based on, I think it was slide three of that PowerPoint, okay? So for very light intensity, I wanna be at less than 57% of her heart rate max. So I'm gonna take 167 times 0.57, and that gives me 95. So heart rate is 
95 or less, and RPE is three or less. And then um, for light intensity, again, I've even given you the percentages here. So less than 60%, okay? So I'm gonna take 167, which was her heart rate max times 0.6, and that tells me heart rate is 100. And RPE for very light, or for light intensity is four to five. Um, for moderate intensity, again, I'm going to use 60 to 75. I'm sorry. So um, in order for this to be a range, we want to go 95 to 100 beats per minute. Okay. Um, so then for moderate, again, I'm going to use that 60 to 75%. So we know that 100 is our lower limit because that was like the edge of this zone, if that makes sense. And so then I need to take 0.75 times 167, which was our heart rate max and I got 125 beats per minute. Um, RPE for moderate, and again, I'm just getting this straight off of the, um, out, off of the PowerPoint. I just printed out that um, intensity chart. So then her RPE for moderate intensity was gonna be six to seven. Okay, moderately high intensity. So again, I wanna go um, 75 to 83%. So for heart rate, I'm at 125 to, um, so then I'm going to take 0.83 times 167, and that'll give me 138 or 139 beats per minute. Um, heart rate for zone three here for that moderately high intensity is like an eight. Vigorous or near vigorous intensity, so 83 to 90%. So again, heart rate is 139 to, and then I'm going to calculate that 90%. So 0.9 times 167 is 150. And her RPE for this one oops, is about a nine. And then maximal, near maximal intensity, again, RPE is 10. And heart rate then is going to be 150 to her max, which we believe to be 167 per minute. Okay. So once you've created this chart, now you're going to design a workout for this person. So for mom, um, again, she doesn't do a lot of... Um, uh, regular exercise, again, I'm like assuming this is my mom. She's not actually 53, but let's just go with it. So that's what we decided. Um, so the goal of the workout, um, ideally for both of these workouts, our major goal should be improvement of cardiovascular fitness or um, some sort of, of cardio workout. Um, again, if you've got a, you don't have somebody in your family that's willing to do that and you need to do yoga, whatever with them, that's fine as well. So just for, for the goal, um, again, let's say for this um, workout, we wanna improve cardiovascular fitness. Um, so, so now basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete this workout with her as I'm training her basically. And maybe it's, you know, maybe it's 20 minutes of walking and then we're going to do some, you know, some light resistance training or something like that. Um, so be creative with it. It doesn't have to be like, you know, super challenging. Again, my mom's not fit at all. So, um, you know, a 20 minute walk, 30 minute walk, something like that would be good for her. Um, maybe if I really wanted to challenge her, we could do, uh, you know, a 20 minute walk and then um, we're going to walk briskly up all the hills. And so we'll kind of use that as kind of our harder intervals or something along those lines. Um, so, you know, be creative with these, but also, you know, be realistic. We don't want to, um, have one of your parents or your brothers or sisters or whatever be mad at you because you're like killing them with this workout or anything. So, so um, basically throughout the workout, you're gonna um, check in with them 10 different times. Okay, so how hard does the trainer think the client is working? So on a scale of one to 10, again, let's say that we're walking and it's just kind of part of our warm up. On a scale of one to 10, I think that her heart rate or her RPE is three and 
what do I think her heart rate is? So now I'm gonna go back up and see, okay, if her RPE is three, I think her heart rate's probably 95 beats per minute. Okay. Then I'm gonna ask my client or my mom in this scenario, how hard do you think you're working? Okay. And she's gonna say, well, I think I'm working at a five. Um, ask them what they think their heart rate is. They might not have any clue, but again, this is kind of fun because now you get to kind of like educate them on um, what it is that you're learning in school. So she has no idea what her heart rate is, so she's going to say 125. Okay. Um, so then once you have those pieces of data, then you're going to get her actual heart rate. So again, if you have a heart rate monitor or you have a smartwatch, something like that, great, use that. If not, you're going to have to just get a manual pulse, a radial um, pulse from her. Just do, you know, six second pulse and then we'll figure out what it is. Okay, so I got a six second pulse on mom and she was at 110 beats per minute for her heart rate. Okay. So again, I'm going to complete this 10 times, like in real time throughout the workout um, with, with mom. Okay. And you're going to do two workouts. Okay. Um, so again, you can do those, you know, whenever you want. I have it kind of scheduled so you could do it over spring break. Um, again, anybody that is living with you or you're already in contact with, um, again, we want to be, you know, um, you know, very safe. So just choose somebody who does live with you. And again, if you have to keep it a super light intensity, that's okay. Um, again, I know this isn't ideal. Um, we're, we're just going to do the best we can with this. Okay. So you're going to complete that twice with mom or whoever. Try to use the same person if you can. Um, if not, maybe you can get mom and dad to do the, the workout together and you can do it all at once. Um, in that case, you're going to have to calculate dad's stuff separately, um, his heart rate zones and that sort of thing. But, you know, that's also fine. If you'd rather do it that way, that's okay. Right? Um, so that's one part of the assignment. The other part, let's see. What did I do with it? You can still see this. Is you're going to um, make sure you're using, and again, a lot of you already have. I've graded some of the the um, your fitness logs that you've handed in your program design, I guess that's what it's called. Um, I've already graded some of those and you're already using this information, but for these two workouts, I want you to be really diligent and specific about um, these intensity zones that you're giving to your clients. So basically you're, gonna, you're going to write two workouts for your clients. You're gonna calculate this stuff here for them. And we're gonna, this will be unique. Um, you're going to have six checkpoints and you're going to do this ahead of time. Okay. So, um, again, I won't go through all of this stuff, but again, imagine that you already filled this in up here and then for workout one, again, let's say the goal is improve cardiovascular fitness. Um, I'm going to write the workout right here, so I'm just going to make one up really quick um, in order for us to kind of like, in order for me to kind of show you what I want you to do. So you're going to start with a five minute walk for your warm up, and we want intensity at 60%, so heart rate 120 beats per minute, RPE is three. Then we're gonna do dynamic stretching, 10 minutes. And again, you know, maybe you're gonna list out all the dynamic stretching that you're gonna do. And here we want intensity to be, I don't know, 70%. So heart rate is 140 beats per minute. And at 70%, they're probably at like a five for RPE. Um, then you're gonna have them do a circuit style workout where they're gonna be doing uh, mountain climbers. They're gonna be doing, I don't know, let's say three rounds. They're gonna do mountain climbers. One minute. They're gonna do squat jumps, one minute. I don't know, they're gonna do 
What else could we do for aerobic? Jumping jacks, one minute. And then they're gonna do, I don't know, let's do an easy one. I don't know, like a high knees, just a standing high knee march. Okay, so they're gonna do three rounds, one minute for exercise, and they're gonna do 20 seconds rest between sets. Let's say 30 seconds rest because we're gonna ask them to get their heart rate. Okay. So then once they complete the workout, they're gonna do a five minute walk for cool down. Um, and then static stretching five minutes. Okay. So again, let's kind of fill in some of these intensities. So for the mountain climbers, those are going to be really hard. So we want intensity to be, I don't know, 80%. And for the squat jumps, it's even harder. So intensity is 95%. Jumping jacks are a little bit easier. So intensity is 70%. And then high knee march is even easier yet. So intensity, 65%. Okay. Um, again, I'm going to go back and fill in the heart rate stuff in then. So heart rate for 80% is like, I don't know, uh, 160 beats per minute. And RPE is like an 8. Okay. So anyway, so you're gonna fill in that for each of the parts of your workout. So you're gonna be very specific in your workout with what you want for intensity and that sort of thing. Then you're gonna go down here and you're gonna fill in when you want them to take their checkpoint. So checkpoint number one, um, during five minute warm up. Okay, how hard do you want them to work? You already listed it up here. So you want them at a three for their RPE. What do you want their heart rate to be? 120. Okay. And then they're going to fill in these last two things, what their actual heart rate is and how hard they thought they were working. Okay. So then, you know, checkpoint number two, following squat jumps. Okay. Um, immediately following squat jumps, we want their, you know, they're working at a nine and we want their heart rate to be 185 or something like that. Okay. Um, so you're going to check in with them or like provide when you want them to check in, you know, six different times. So you're going to do that for each of your clients. You're going to do that for two different workouts. Again, it, it, we're, we're losing that piece where we don't necessarily get to see, um, you know, how hard we think they're working. So you lose a little bit of that piece, but again, it, I think this will be helpful for your client to be able to start to understand those heart rate zones and that sort of thing. So um, that's what we're kind of after with, with that. So you'll fill all this out for them and then you're gonna email it to them so that they have that to do. Um, ideally, they're gonna get this back to you by Monday, April 13th um, by 5 p.m. And then the next day on Tuesday, April 14th, you'll hand it in um, because you're gonna write a little summary. So you're gonna kind of, uh, let me go back to my other thing here. You're going to write a one page reflection basically on how you felt like it went with your mom or whoever your family member person was. And then also with your, um, with your clients where you sent them the workouts and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, so again, if you're, if you're having questions about this, that sort of thing, please let me know. I know this is kind of a lot. Um, so you've got to do basically two different things. You're going to do um, monitoring intensity with a family member, and then you're also going to send a workout to your clients, send two workouts to your clients so that they can monitor their intensity as well. Right? Um, so again, just let me know if you have questions on this. I hope you have a great day, and I think that's it.